Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for somebody on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1975 Corvette Open Roadster by MPC. Now this one is a moldy oldie out of my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now we roll the clock all the way back to 1975 as we take a look at our Open Corvette Roadster model kit by MPC. In this model kit you can build one of three ways as the stock version, the drag racing version, or the street rod version. The classic Open Roadster packed with parts to build your favorite version. Look at all these parts. Stock wheels, mag wheels, racing wheels, hollow racing tires, a Wankel rotary engine, then we have posable front wheels, as well as a roll bar, metal springs, protective straps, which are your seat belts, and then we've got this multi-piece drag racing motor as well. On this side of the box we get a special side view of our Corvette showing the decal location, and a great tip on making a background in here for your diorama, and then we have, look for all these great 75 current car kits. Now this kit was an annual back in the day, so you can see things like the 75 Corvette Roadster, the Ford Pinto, the Plymouth Duster, the Plymouth Roadrunner, and all kinds of other great things. However, there is one thing that I did notice while taking a look at this model car. They list the 454 cubic inch engine on the side of the box, and sadly, the 1975 Corvette never actually had that motor for it was dropped in 1974. Now here we have our instruction sheet that came with the kit, as well as our decal sheet, which we'll take a look at toward the end. Then we've got all our white components, like the body and the chassis and front nose. This is an old kit, so somebody obviously had taken a look at it before in the past. And then here we have all our other components. Say, doesn't this look very much like the AMT 75 Corvette we looked at a while ago? However, there are some major, major changes to the kit. But you can see where the, the uh, roots of the model came from. Then again, we've got all these components. Then our chrome and our tires in the bottom. Here we have the instruction sheet for our 1975 Corvette Roadster. And I say that like that because we're actually going to find out this is a 1974 Corvette. However, I like to kind of think of this one as being sold as a 75 on a car dealership at the end of the car year for 1974. And the car dealer just wanted to get rid of the thing, so he pawned it off as a 75 instead of what it really was, which is a 74. Panel 1 shows our wheels going together with our stock tires, as well as the rear drags. And here we have the stock or the street racer wheels, which are the stock wheels without the caps in the center. And then, of course, our stock wheels with the caps in the center. And then our drag racing wheels, which are again those vector style. And they'll all go into these stock tires. And if we remove the center on our wheel back, everything will work out nicely. Now for the rear tires, you can either use the street racing wheels or the drag wheels because these are going into slicks for your custom and street machine. And then they have these deeper rear backs as opposed to the narrow ones for the stock wheels just so that everything goes together and sinks in nicely. Now here's what really gives this thing away as being a 1974 or one of the things, is the 454 Chevy engine, which of course was dropped in 1975 for the more fuel efficient economical 350 cubic inch engine, because in 1975 they were getting into that whole gas crunch thing. Anyway, continuing on, now we do have our stock air cleaner, our four barrel carburetor, and our distributor in two pieces because it's shielded being on a fiberglass car. Then our intake manifold for the stock. Our street racer has the tricarbs and the triangular air cleaner, which was more of a late 60s, early 70s style setup. And then we've got this nice drag racing one with the velocity stacks going into the special manifold. Our engine is a two piece left and right with a chrome oil pan and a chrome front end. 
the chrome alternator and then we've got our fans and pulleys as well as our chrome fan and then our valve covers cylinder heads and your choice of the stock exhaust manifold or the street racer which in this model are being glued into the uh, cylinder heads before you actually assemble it into the frame. This model car also includes the four rotor Wankel engine which was quite a new and exciting thing back in 1975 and of course we've got our two-piece engine with the differential on the back. We have a chrome oil pan and the starter motor as well as some other components. I'm not too sure how the Wankel works. I know it is an engine without a spark plug and without valves. So I know that much, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> There's the front cover, alternator fan belts and fan, and then our exhaust manifold on the one side and our intake manifold and carburetor and air cleaner all on this side. There would be our distributor. And you get a nice little engine stand included with this motor as well. Here we have our front suspension showing the real metal springs going in place with our upper A arms and this little tab locks them in place so that they will move up and down. And then we have our motor mount for the Wankel, which would glue in here, but you leave it off for the 454. Then underneath we have our poseable front suspension and our uh, front stabilizer going in place here. Panel 5 shows our two-piece differential being glued together, and then you add in these universal joints in here, which go into these pieces and into our brake drums. Then we also have our spare tire cover gluing in place and this rear stabilizer bar, which all glue onto the chassis. Panel six shows our groovy Wankel engine or our 454 big block being glued into the chassis with this upper radiator hose and our radiator and our fan shroud all going into place. Here you get a far out looking firewall and our rear drive shaft. And here we have our rear exhaust pipes with our mufflers and our catalytic converters, which I guess would make this portion of the car, but this only, the 1975 version. <laughs> and then we've got our cross brace going in here, as well as our wheels gluing onto those axles. Panels 8 and 9 give us a lowdown on both the interior and our body assemblies. And we'll start with the interior. Now this is a really groovy piece. If you want to listen to Lady Bump on your radio, you got it right here on your dashboard. Your steering column includes the rally wheel. And then we've got an instrument cluster, which will glue on right over your pockets on your dashboard for your maps. You get a racing helmet in here, which you can place anywhere in the tub. There's our bucket seats and our harnesses going in place for racing, as well as this groovy roll bar with roll bar supports. And as we get into panel 9, you can see our splash aprons gluing in underneath with our hood going in place. Then we get our bumper, which glues in the front, and these really cool looking grills with the parking lights in place. Then our windshield will go up into our frame with our rear view mirror as well. Panel 10 is really far out because here you get a racing side mirror, which you admit for stock, and then our rear tail lamps going in place, our chrome gas cap, which again is emitted for the stock version, and then we've got a side mirror here, our body shell drops down onto our interior, which drops on to our chassis, and then here we get these nice lake pipes going up the side. And as our bonus treat of the week for 1974, haha, <laughs> We have this really groovy diorama idea. Now, unfortunately, we don't get these pieces in the kit. However, it does say to complete your model and give it a place of honor on your shelf. We suggest building a diorama to display your creation. Following are a few suggestions for adding realism. The options are endless to personalize your model. Shown at the right are feet and 125th scale down here, this ruler, the groovy says to cut the cardboard sides as shown, so you'd get corrugated cardboard, but now you could use foam core board, which is a lot more rigid, and I think it's better. So you would cut one 12 inches long by 8 inches deep, and then 6 inches high in the back, again by 12 inches long. It says to cut a picture of a house out of a magazine and paste it up against the backdrop. Now you want to make sure it's in scale to the car, though, which they don't... Well, they, they do give you some scale here, so you can try to figure it out. 
And then it says to paint the base green or gray, but you could use flocking now or uh, even glue some sandpaper, fine sandpaper upside down, which make it look like asphalt. Then it says to tie string on both ends to hold the backdrop to the base. But of course now you could use a hot glue gun and go right across the back and it would end up looking pretty nice. Wouldn't need these little strings on there. Uh, and then paint cotton for bushes and glue over the strings to hide your strings. Then you put your model on the top and you got this groovy little diorama. And flying right out of the mold here, we have our 1975 Corvette body. Now there is one mistake again. This has the 1974 medallion on it. So there's our final clue that this kit is actually a Reebok 74 with a brand new year stamped onto the side. But again, it was an annual kit, so MPC, I guess, you know, cut corners and produced quick back in the day. But like the AMT kit from last week, we have seen the revisions, the removal of the 74 emblem and the addition of the 75 just to get this thing corrected. And again, one thing, if you're trying to build this as a 74, it does not have the split in the rear bumper and does include the little uh, bumperettes at the back here. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can't really make it as a proper 74. So again, it's sort of an in-betweener, oops, mistaker. But it's not bad, I mean, for what it is. You can always sand that off and replace the emblem. You get the sugar scoops inside with Stingray as well. Now this is right out of the mold, so there are still some bits that you have to clean up. There are some very high ridges along the tops of these fenders, so a bit of mold misalignment. But not bad. Not bad at all. Very much like last week's. Again, it's got the little hook in the front for mounting your front bumper in place. But overall, this kit is good for what it is. As you can see, there are very many white plastic components in this model kit. Many of them are loose because this is an old kit, so I'm going to have to put them in a Ziploc bag in the future so I don't lose any. This part tree shows our engine components as well as the other engine bits that were loose in the box. So here we have our two catalytic converters. We have our brace for our Wankel rotary motor. And note that the Wankel motor here has an automatic transmission. Then we have the Wankel engine parts like our exhaust manifold, our little air cleaner, and the belts and pulleys. Here we have our intake manifold for 454, which is our velocity stack one. And then we've got our instrument gauge for the dashboard, as well as the groovy seat belts. Then we've got our 454 with, again, the automatic transmission, the big exhaust manifolds, the cylinder head, and then we've got our air cleaner for the stock version. There's our different uh, intake manifolds, the stock version, as well as the tricarb, the front cover for our Wankel, and the belts and pulleys for our 454. And here we have a very odd parts tree. It's got our chassis as well as our front bumper right here. And you can see our front bumper is molded quite nicely. It's got the license plate in there, as well as the little panels underneath. Very nicely done. And then our chassis under here, excellent. It's got all the right look to it. And the mold marks are on the back side here, which is really, really good. Here we have some loose components, again, mixed with a full parts tree. Or more or less full, because there is a missing component. So we've got our splash aprons for the inner wheel wells. We've got our fan shroud, as well as our radiator. Here's our wheels, the rear ones, and then the fronts. And then the wheel backs and these extension pieces for the bigger tires. We have our seat belt here, our two roll bar ends, as well as our roll bar here. These are braces. Our differential in two pieces, our crossover mount as well, and then we've got our steering components up here and our rear differential components. Now on these parts trees and loose parts, we have our front bucket seats, our steering column and rally steering wheel, as well as our racing helmet, this groovy firewall, our exhaust mufflers and pipes, and then we've got the engine stand for the Wankel and our hood, as well as these real springs. So I know I haven't been bringing much up into the camera because basically this is the same kit as AMT 1975 Corvette. Although I thought I'd do it on this one because here you can see the actual real springs and how nice they are. 
These of course are like pen springs, so they will compress. Again, very nice touch, but I can see why they dropped these, because they must have been pretty hard for model builders to put together back in the day. Underneath our hood we have that nice matting. There is also a sunken detail so that you can cut in for those velocity stacks by removing that piece. I don't see too many mold marks underneath there. They are nicely hidden, which again is quite good for the kit. Then we've got our firewall up here with all the nice wiring in place, which would be really good to paint with a dry brush technique. The stand for our Wankel rotary has a wood grain pattern onto it, which will look quite nice. And then of course we've got our bucket seats with that nice detail in there. Again, excellent, excellent molding. Now, the only problem we have is our steering wheel got squished in the box. And this is what James was saying, why they tape them into the interior parts, just to avoid that from happening. Our final white plastic components consist of this very wonderful looking dashboard. And as you can see, it has the proper deep sunken in instrument panels, as well as the glove box with the map pockets and a beautiful radio if you want to listen to Lady Bump as you're grooving on down the highway. And then we've got our interior bucket, which is nicely done. However, there is one major issue to this kit. Here you have your pedals for standard transmission with the clutch, the brake, and the gas pedal. And as you recall, this kit comes with both engine options having automatic transmissions. So it is nice that RC2 corrected this issue with their 1975 Corvette and gave us the automatic floor pedals. Here we have our chrome parts tree, as well as some loose in the bag chrome components. So I don't want to lose those, so I'll end up putting them in a Ziploc. There you get your triangle air cleaner as well as the different little bits and pieces. Looks like one of the velocity stacks also popped off. So thankfully it's still there. So bringing our chrome parts tree up into the camera, you can see the nice detail work on those mag wheels, as well as the stock wheels, which looks very good. There we have our brakes, as well as the velocity stacks, which you can see this way. Again, nice work. The chrome looks good. Everything seems to be right. There's our oil pan with all the nice bolts in place. The grills, the parking lights. Again, very good work and all this should brighten up your Corvette. Here's the glass components for a convertible Corvette and you get this nice front windshield as well as the four red tail lamps. And remember to paint white in the center of both of these just to make sure you have those backup lights. Again, two out of four. So there's our little pegs, which will go into the holes in the back of our rear bumper, just to secure that those lights glue into place. Here we have our tire options for our 1974-5 Corvette. And as you can see, we've got these nice Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, as well as the bigger racing wheels. The racing wheels are quite nice. It's got a nice wide tread on there. Looks really cool. And now for these wheels, you can always use your wheel spinning tool, put it in the center, put this end in your drill press and spin them, sandpaper down the edge, and make that tread look like it's actually been run on the street. If you're interested in the technique on how to do this, check out our tips and tech section up here. Now how's this for a blast from the past? Here's our Corvette decal sheet. And as you can see, there's a lot of cool things on here. The MPC logo, Lee, Krager, Chevrolet, Goodyear Champion, and many others. Now the problem is these decals have got really old and they've cracked. There is a technique where you can spray clear lacquer over top of this, a bunch of coats, and that'll hold it all together as you soak these in the water. And that completes our look at the MPC 1975 Corvette Open Roadster. And if you've built this model kit back in the past, we'd like to see your pictures over on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the 1975 Corvette Open Roadster by MPC. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell 
so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!